Remember the fight over net neutrality? Activists and corporations battled over the structure of the internet. Both sides tried to convince the government that their way was right, but who were they trying to convince? Was it the president, Congress, the Supreme Court? None of the above. People were trying to convince the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. The FCC is one of these things called federal agencies, and the laws around them are called administrative law. So there isn't a perfect definition for an agency that's consistent for all things called agencies. But roughly, agencies are the parts of the government that aren't Congress, the courts, the president, or the military during wartime. Imagine that one of those things, either Congress or the president, decide to do something, like building roads. Well, they're not going to pick up shovels in the concrete themselves. They're also not going to hire and oversee the workers themselves. Instead, they'll create an agency to carry out their goal. Agencies are most of the things in the government whose name is a jumble of letters, like the NSA, the FBI, the EPA, NASA, FTC, ATF, DOJ, DOE, etc. Agencies are formed by an act of Congress. Congress writes a kind of law called an organic statute that lays out the purpose and the structure of the agency. And then the agency is in charge of implementing that purpose as it's laid out in the statute. I like to think of federal agencies like giant robots. So Congress needs to deal with a specific subject matter, but that issue's kind of varied. They don't want to get into all the specifics themselves, but it needs to be dealt with. So they build a giant robot to deal with it. And while they're building it, they need to give it a structure that corresponds to its goals. An agency's structure might be designed to deal with investigating federal crimes, like the FBI, or maybe with promulgating standards for science and industry, like NIST. These different goals need different organizations to achieve them efficiently. A major part of the structure is the cockpit. Just like some giant robots have only one pilot, and some have multiple, different agencies are headed up by different arrangements of officers. These positions are appointed by the president. Department of Homeland Security has one officer in charge of the whole agency, who reports directly to the president. The FCC has multiple commissioners, who all have slightly more independence. Officers in charge of certain very important agencies make up the president's cabinet. Also, while some agencies are totally independent, other agencies can actually be subsumed into one giant super agency. The organic statutes also give agencies a subject matter specific focus, like environmental protection or alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Some agencies are purely internal and advisory, like the Office of Management and Budget, but most focus on some specific subject matter in society, like housing or trade. The language of these purpose statements aren't super specific because they need to deal with varied circumstances. Remember, the whole point is that Congress doesn't want to do the specifics themselves. So just like a pilot is responsible for implementing a more general mission plan, the agency's leaders are responsible for implementing a more general statute. This is why agencies are called semi-independent executive bodies. They get independence, but only within the scope of the organic statute. The agency's two biggest tools for implementing their statutes are rulemaking and adjudication. Agencies can make rules within their subject matter that have the force of law. They can also investigate, prosecute, and judge rule breakers. So we have these giant robots with legal power and independence. We've created a monster. Well, there are several mechanisms for controlling the agencies. First, Congress gets to shape the agency from the beginning. The agency is dependent on Congress for money and power and a purpose. Congress can call the agency head in front of a congressional committee and hammer them with questions. They can cut off funding for the agency if they want to, which will effectively disable it. Also, the president gets to put the pilot in the robot. They get to choose who's steering the agency. The president also gets to order the agencies around. These are called executive orders, and they're supposed to make sure that the agency is acting in accord with the will of the people. So besides these structural controls, the Administrative Procedure Act is the law's biggest source of control over the agencies. Congress passed this law, the Administrative Procedure Act, or the APA, in 1946. The APA controls the agency's tools of rulemaking and adjudication. Agency rulemaking is how the agencies take the general mandate of their organic statute and turn it into specific rules. For example, the Food and Drug Administration makes specific rules about the purity and manufacture of food and drugs. The Highway Safety Administration makes specific rules about the road. The APA says that most rules made by an agency must be open to notice and comment. 
This means that a notice of the proposed rule is printed up in the giant federal list of proposed rules, and the agency has to accept comments about the rule from all interested parties. The APA also says that the agency must respond to any comments that are substantial. Agencies also adjudicate claims of rule violations. For this purpose, the APA created the position of the Administrative Law Judge, or the ALJ. In general, ALJs have two primary duties in the administrative adjudication process. First, they oversee procedural things like depositions and witnesses, and they also determine the facts of the case. Then they make an initial judgment of the law and judge whether or not someone has broken the agency's rules. So ALJs act very much like a trial judge at a court, except they're constrained to a much smaller jurisdiction. The vast majority of ALJs work for Social Security, determining disability and dependency questions. Well, what happens if people think that an agency's rule is bad or illegal or even unconstitutional? The APA attempts to balance the government's need to control the agency with the agency's role as the executor of the law. Usually the courts defer to the agency when it's interpreting its organic statute a.k.a. when the robot is interpreting its mission. The courts are much more demanding when the agency is making claims about facts and reasoning. So, in conclusion, agencies are created by a congressional statute which gives the agency a structure and a purpose, and then the agency is given broad authority to interpret that purpose. The agency is piloted by one or more people who is chosen by the president, and the whole agency is checked and constrained by the Administrative Procedure Act. 